Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm Greg. And you saw the other video of us on a road trip to Montana. But those two videos ended. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> We were in Montana. We filmed some, some of the drive. Some of the. Some of the <laughs> <laughs> we didn't vlog very much when we were in Montana, but uh, we did do a lot of really cool things. So we're just going to share that. We're going to share some pictures and videos we took and tell you about our time in Montana. And then um, we have a whole vlog of our road trip back. So you'll get to watch that when that comes out. First day we got to Montana, we got there. We kind of just explored the house and stuff. I showed you a picture before, but here's some more pictures of what like outside the house looked like. The reason we did this whole road trip was because we could. We could work at home because of the pandemic. Yeah. And so if we could work at home, we could work anywhere with internet. Normally I work eight to four, but since Montana is in the mountain mountain time zone, instead of getting up at eight o'clock to start work, I had to get up at six o'clock. And instead of finishing work at 4 p.m., I finished by 2 p.m., which meant that we got to do a lot of cool, fun Montana activities after work because it was still pretty early in the day. A lot of what we did was playing games. We played lots of games outside. Um, we had my whole family there, basically and we went out and we played spike ball and can jam a lot. And then there was a pig roast that second day also. So after everyone finished work, um, we went to a pig roast and that we got- That was not as good as they hyped it up to be. It wasn't it was just as good kind of as a previous lot of years. Dry pork barbecue yeah. with store-bought sauce. It wasn't bad, but it was The wasn't cookies good. were pretty good. The next day we went to Olive Bees for lunch. Or was it dinner? No, it was dinner. We went to Albies for dinner. We went to a restaurant for dinner. So at Albies is super awesome because they've got bison burgers there. And if you go to Montana, you should get bison burgers because they are good. And we also got some shaved ice from a farmer's market. I didn't understand why shaved ice was so super cool. I grew up with shaved ice, so I was trying to explain that it's really good shaved ice. Where they actually have the machine and the big block of ice and it literally shaves it. It's so much better than just a snow cone because it doesn't get hard. It's like soft and fluffy all the way through and there's all these great flavors. She didn't get that. She never had real shaved ice. Yeah, because half the time when they say shaved ice, they really just mean snow cone. And snow cones aren't that good because yeah. it's just like hard ice. Yeah, snow cones are lame. Yeah. Shaved ice is good. It was so good. And we had to go back and we got some more the next, the week. next week. Yeah. But we'll get there. Be patient. Sorry. Shut up. Next day was kind of the same thing. The, de the next day was kind of similar. No, you said death. The next death? You said the, you said the death day. <laughs> the death day. That's when also a zebra died. Samantha's niece is hilarious and adorable. And is that a video we can attach? <laughs> We're just going to attach that. Here you see the panda. Um, and here's the... Here's the bunny. Yes. I want to see the bunny. Trade me. Okay, I want the purple one. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry. You can't trade. Oh, he took both. I get to see the bunny. Can I see the fox? Um, we don't have a fox, but we have a fox camel. I get. I don't want to see a fox camel. I get to see the camel twice now, and the bunny. Thanks. Once. Okay, and here's the fox camel dog. Okay. Well, I got. Okay, I want. I get to see the camel two times. I get to see more animals and than the you. Bunny once. Okay. I get to see more animals. No, you bring him to us. I don't want to move. <laughs> We got tickets to see different animals at a zoo, and I got to see more animals than he did. I wanted to see the dead zebra. One of the exhibits was a dead zebra, and you can see. The next day, on the 24th, Gray played disc golf at this crazy disc golf place. I didn't get to because I was working, but I've done it many times before. What's up? Yeah, it's kind of a crazy disc golf course. It goes up and down the mountain multiple times. It's basically a hike, but you're also playing difficult disc, disc, disc. Golf. <laughs> Did you win? 
No. But I didn't do that bad on the front end. He was playing with my brothers and Lexi. Was she there? Yeah, Lexi was there. Your brothers are both really tall and really good at... Sports. Something. Uh, and that night was when I tried taking night sky pictures with the camera for the first time just to try it all the Oh, up at the house? Uh-huh. Mm. Those ones are kind of weird. They got this greenish tint to them. They're not that good. But they're still pretty you can show cool. You want pretty them. cool, pretty cool. Mm. Next day was a big day. The next day was Saturday. Big so things happening. Big things got to happen on Saturday. Um, we went on a hike to Lava Lake and I had to take Gray there because it's one of my favorite hikes. And did you like it? That was a great hike. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, and it was yeah. really cool at the top. There's a light. It's pretty cold. Yeah, we we actually went swimming in the we lake. Did. We were the only ones who were willing to do that. It was Otter went swimming too. Yeah, the, uh, my brother's dog went swimming with us, <laughs> and it wasn't as cold as some other years when I've been there, but it was still pretty cold because it's basically mountain runoff that makes this lake. So it's just like ice and. But the water is super, super clear, super clean. It's just beautiful up there. And then there's mountains and it's awesome. That's fun. And then we went to Yellowstone. We went to Yellowstone. That was the thing that I was looking forward to the whole time was I wanted to go to Yellowstone and see all the stuff and take pictures of it all. And then I really wanted to be in Yellowstone at night because I found this dark sky map. This is what the sky looks like where we live. And you can see that there's some more city kind of areas out to kind of in the country. It gets a little bit darker and you can definitely see some stars. This is what it looks like in Big Sky and Yellowstone. Parts of Yellowstone are just complete utter blackness and you can see all the stars and it was great. I plugged in where the Milky Way was gonna be and Gray where it's gonna be in the sky at a certain dark time. Sky map just a few days after a new moon, so there wasn't, it wasn't going to be that bright, and the moon was actually going to be behind the, it was actually going to be over the horizon the whole time anyway. We went into Yellowstone, we drove in there with some of your family. We took the long loop around and ended around the time it was getting dark at Old Faithful. We watched Old Faithful erupt. I guess During the summer, at sunset. Yeah. Before that though, we saw the paint pots I've and never... the canyon a little bit. Uh, yeah. It, it was kind of raining on and off, so it wasn't very good weather to see all that stuff, so we didn't see a lot of it. We didn't get to see the canyon very well. The rest of it we saw yeah. pretty well. So, but this was actually the most terrifying day ever. I had been worrying a little bit about this because I knew that staying in the park at night and going out to the geyser at night, the spring, hot springs, would have its own set of challenges. So one was just driving on the roads at night, a lot of wildlife in Yellowstone. There's people in Yellowstone. There's also a lot of wildlife, you know. Yeah, dangerous well, I don't wildlife. Know if, I don't know if it's elk or caribou bison, or whatever it is. Bison, bears. Bears, grizzly you just, bears. You don't want to run into anything on the road is probably concern number one. And that actually, statistically, was probably the most dangerous thing. As far as I could find out, there was no rule against going in there at night or He wanted me to go out onto a path in completely dark, no s moonlight at all, and walk through all get, of this. Get to that. It's one of those narrow boardwalks that Yellowstone has out over all this geothermal ground with geysers and hot springs to either side in the dark and you fall off the path, then you could fall into the stuff and die. There's also- Yeah, you know how dangerous that is? Like walking off the path in Yellowstone, it's not just like your regular hike where if you walk off the path, it's like discouraged. No, if you walk off the path in Yellowstone, you die. Here's a picture that's gonna pan up from the geothermal ground sign to all of those elk standing on the ground and they don't get- Yeah, it. cause like the animals- They know where to walk, I guess. They know, but- yeah. People don't because we wear shoes and stuff and we don't know the area. So And plus it was dark. It was pitch black. Yeah, it was dark. And so we we went to Grand Prismatic Spring. It was already dark by the time we got there, or at least starting to get very dark. I'd forgotten my really bright flashlight, so all we had was Samantha's really dim flashlight. And we And our phone flashlights. And our phone flashlights. And so we started walking to get there you from the parking lot, you walk over a bridge across the river. And from there, you walk up kind of a big zigzag to the main loop path at Grand Prismatic Spring. Once you cross the bridge and go across the zigzag, you're walking on a path with no railing, and to your left, there's all this steam coming up in your face, and it'll actually sometimes rolls over the path, and so you can't see. You can't see anything! You, you can't see anything at all! You can only see a foot or two in front of you. 
Yeah. No, you can't. Yeah. So like we shine the flashlight trying to see something, but all you see is all the steam. And Gray just wants me to keep walking into the steam, and we're we walked through it like for how long? We were walking through it for like, like five we, hours, and about, we didn't even make. It. <laughs> yeah, but we didn't get out of it yet, and it was terrifying. Yeah, and I was we, like, we got out of it, and there was no. I I made you turn around. I, we, actually, we we did turn around. Yeah, there, there was there was a little there was a bench about halfway through it, and the railing kind of started again. And at that point, you decided you, you couldn't keep going through this. So we turned around, and we started looking for... And we got walked back to the car and started looking for other spots where maybe we could take the pictures from near the car. But they needed to be facing a certain direction. But Gray's like, no, this is the best spot ever. I told her I was going to go back in and die. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't have to come with me. Eventually, I pressured her into coming in. We had already... I, I wanted to go... It's not like I didn't want to go in. Like, I yeah. wanted to go in. It's just I didn't want to because it was terrifying. Like, and he was scared too. He wasn't... It, it's not like he was like, Yeah, I'm gonna walk into this pile of steam. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> he uh, was like scared too. Well, it, but the thing is, we... I, I knew that it would get better once we got through the steam and you could actually see where you were going. And we were so close to getting through the steam. I'm like, I think we could do it again. We just got to go a little further. It just felt weird that it was like this it barrier felt... from the parking lot. There's like all this steam and it's like you cross into the threshold and now you're in this like crazy Yellowstone it... world of like... It was awful. Geysers. It felt... <laughs> it felt... Awful. So we walk across this bridge. We're talking to each other it the whole time. It smells so bad too. We're talking to each other the whole time. And I had read, oh, you're supposed to talk really loud and, you know, to keep bears from approaching you. And if you can't think of anything, just start from randomly saying, hey, bear. I tried that once. You hated it. Yeah, I hated it. you didn't it. want to think about bears. I didn't want to think. You kept so, saying, hey, bear. And so I was like, there's nothing. I said that once and you're like, you don't say that. So then we, what did we say saying instead? We started saying um, good mouse because we saw mice we on the We did! Path. We were on the bridge, and as we were crossing the bridge, there was a mouse that ran along. <laughs> he was so cute. And there was another one. I so loved him. The mouse, the mice were our friends. We were like, oh, such a good mouse, and so then we kept yeah. saying good mouse. And we just kept, yeah, so like, exactly that. We said, Instead of hey bear. And so we started talking about the mouse, and they ran out of things to say, and we started talking about other stuff. <laughs> and when we ran, couldn't think of anything to say, we just ran and we'd go, good mouse. And we would say things like that to keep bears from approaching us. I wasn't too worried about bears because the bear would have to either follow this crazy path or just walk across the hot springs. Which the thing was is that like, yeah, that it that would be kind of hard for the bear to do. But earlier that day, there were a bunch of elk standing like right next to a hot spring. So the animals clearly know like how to navigate around Yellowstone. So the bears could have done the same thing. Oh, you're gonna want to put this earlier, but the hot springs with all the steam coming up right off of the path was not just a hot spring. It was actually a geyser. It's a dormant geyser, but it yeah. was a pit. It was right off the edge of it. It was this massive crevasse thing with not even a railing. And it was just this gorge that you can't see. It's this huge hole in the ground, this massive hole in the ground the size of a house with just steam coming out of it. Uh, and it was pretty scary. But once we got through all of the steam, we got out on the path and we kind of, was kind of forking the road, and we decided to take the, the shorter route over to where the big spring, Grand Prismatic Spring is. We didn't actually end up going to the big Grand Prismatic Spring, because there's a bunch of steam coming out of that. You can't really see it at night. But kind of the runoff water from that is just this beautiful, flat place with all this just water sitting on it. It reflects the stars, and it's kind of got this cool texture in it and stuff. It was super pretty. It, it was, was really pretty so once we got out there. Like, I've never seen stars like that. Um, we could see so much. We could see the Milky Way, yeah. just like with our eyes. And then Gray took photos. There, there were two it. other photographers out there, and I tried to stay out of their way, but I think I still managed to get some pretty cool shots. It's, it's the best. I've got a lot to learn, and I just got the gear necessary to do this about a year ago. So I'm still learning everything I can to learn about this. But it was the, the best place that I've had to work with yet. It's the, my favorite photos that I've ever taken. So that was pretty cool. And then it was also nerve-wracking getting back to the car. At one point I went over to talk to the photographers and I didn't tell her that I was going over to talk to the photographers. Cause I didn't know where you were. Yeah. It was pitch black. I was trying to take a video of the path, to try to show you how um, thin the path was. And we were basically standing on this thin path with, you know, geothermal stuff on either side of us with no railings or anything in the dark. It was also cold. It was like 40 degrees. Yeah, I had a huge winter coat. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So we were bundled up and taking some photos. We stayed out there shivering, maybe an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we probably could have waited longer and let it get even darker and stuff, but then it would have just been even scarier coming back. The other photographers left. I took a few more photos just myself. And, uh, and also the cloud cover was coming. Yeah. So we had to go back the, anyway. The clouds would come and sometimes the steam from the hot springs would blow over and kind of cover the stars and sometimes it would open back up. So some of my photos are real steamy and some aren't. But it was really cool. So then we finally got back in the car around 11.30, midnight, yeah, around midnight, somewhere around then. And so we drove, and I drove very slowly out of the park. It's only about an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's only about that an hour and a half back to Big Sky. We didn't get back until 2 a.m. Yeah, but we drove Past. very slowly and very deliberately and drank an energy drink and uh, watching, keeping an eye out for any animals across the road. That I was, was concern. struggling to stay awake. Yeah, but we got back safe and sound probably wouldn't try it again unless we had like a hotel in Yellowstone or something because it was yeah we we're pushing it a little and bit. also it was just scary but it was really cool it was super cool I'm really really glad we did it. I am too that was awesome but it was just yeah yeah it probably wouldn't be as scary the second time but it was terrifying yeah. the next day on Sunday we did a family tubing trip which was super fun we got these pickle sandwiches from the pickle barrel we went to the Pickle Barrel earlier in our road trip, if you remember that from our other vlogs. But this time, the Pickle Barrel in Bozeman, you can actually get pickle sandwiches, like where the buns are pickles. So good. I love pickles. That was weird. I didn't have one of those because I don't like pickles. Yeah, but I did and it was awesome. I have a picture of it. I don't know what the river was. I think was. it was the Madison River. The Madison River. And not the Gallatin River. Not the Gallatin. The Gallatin is too shallow and too narrow and too fast. Yeah. Probably too cold. For tubing. Ooh, true. The Madison River is warmer and wider and deeper, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. We all kind of just tied a bunch of tubes together and went down the river for a couple of hours. Yeah, it was actually pretty long. And we had snacks. Yeah. And a guy tossed us a. One guy tossed us a lemonade a, beer. Yeah, a Mike's Hard lemonade. So the Gallatin isn't good for tubing, but it is good it for... It is good for fishing. Fly fishing. So yeah, I've Monday. been fly fishing once in my life before this trip, and I'm not good at it at all. I'm not really good at any kind of fishing, but I'm especially bad at fly fishing because it's really hard. So I had a fly fishing rod that I borrowed from my dad that I brought with us on the trip, and I brought some other, you know, basic pieces of gear. But I went to a fly shop and I bought the stuff that I needed and a fishing license. And the whole trip I was like, do I need to buy waders? Do I need to buy special boots for the river? And I decided probably not going to go enough to justify that. So I had cheap Walmart water shoes for five bucks. Almost died falling over in this river like five times, but I didn't fall. How many times did we almost die on this trip? So many. So many times. So okay, if I if I did in a hail storm. if I did this more than once a year, I would probably actually buy some fly fishing boots. But I didn't. Saved so a lot just of money. Used water shoes. All I bought were flies, and a fishing license, and some tippet. And you caught a fish. Well, the first day I didn't. Oh yeah. Because I don't really know what I'm doing, <laughs> and I didn't have the money for a lesson or anything. You couldn't do the reverse double mocha. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> the next day, the 28th, I went fishing another time. Mm-hmm. And I actually caught a fish, a very, very small rainbow trout. He was so cute. But I was very happy to have caught a fish, because that means I either got lucky or was doing something at least partially right. You're a pro. Which is fun. Either both of those things are fun. So I caught a very small fish, and I let him go, and then I was done for the day, because my feet were frozen and I couldn't feel them, because the water was <laughs> cold. And then we went to uh, play golf. Yeah. Not you. I went to the playground with my nieces. And then him and my dad and my two brothers went to play golf. I did really good. Yeah. I don't know. My short game wasn't good. I was driving really far and really straight. I was hitting my driver like 290 yards, which is good for me. Uh, and was probably just because of the altitude. And yeah, I, I only play, kind of I play golf like once every two years. So I was... You're a pro golfer. I was doing okay. I was doing surprisingly good. Yeah, and the playground had fun swings. It started that to I rain. Swung on. 
started to rain, so we only got about 12 holes. Oh yeah, they decided to keep playing when like a thunderstorm was happening. Mm -hmm. Another time we almost died on this trip. Yeah. Uh, they were like driving around in golf carts swinging metal sticks, and you know, lightning was happening. Well, we just kept doing another <laughs> hole, so I think we got 12 done. It was good. And we were tied, I, we, were, well, we, we were tied after 12, so we uh, stopped then, because we didn't know who yeah, we, we were. We were playing team best ball to speed things well, up. Well, you, you kept on trying to keep going, but then you kept being tied, and then the storm kept getting closer and closer. I was I was with them for the very end, because I... Her brothers were... Uh, I got dropped off, and I rode around in the gold her, cart with Her them. brothers are not good at counting their strokes. They were definitely over. Losing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On Wednesday, our last day there, we did an escape room. Yeah, we did. We went to Bozeman and we did an Apollo 13 themed escape room. I have to say that of the escape rooms I have done in my life, that was one of the best. Actually, that probably was the best, but I still hate escape rooms because I don't like working with people to solve puzzles. I like to solve puzzles by myself. But we crushed it. We did really yeah, well. Yeah, we did really well. Uh, we weren't like the top score but we were really fast we were up there. yeah and then on we didn't the way... use any hints though yeah we didn't and then on the way back from the escape room oh my gosh there was so much construction going on that uh, yeah, it was we were stuck in traffic just stand still not moving at all for like an hour and then we had to get back so we'd go to the farmer's market again to get more shaved ice mm -hmm. and that's what we did we also got some paella we did we got paella i like to make paella and the farmer's market was making giant paellas. Yeah, do you have a picture of that? I did take a picture of that. I can see it. It was so big. Yeah, and that was, then we packed up and we left the next day. Yeah, we left after, right after I finished work the next day. And so you will see clips of that. We headed to North Dakota. Stay tuned. Yeah, we wanted to go back through North Dakota because we had never been in North Dakota and no one knew what was in North Dakota. And I wanted to make sure it was a real place. So, you will be shocked. By it what was we found. amazing. You, sh you should wait and see the next vlog. Yeah. Nobody knows what's actually in North Dakota, but it's incredible. Yeah, for real though. Like I was not expecting it at all. Yeah. Yeah, you'll see on the next vlog. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe. Yeah, do that, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and check out my other videos about cancer and stuff and if you don't like cancer because no one does um check out our other fun vlogs about you know us getting engaged and um our road trip yep yeah yeah that's all bye bye